Hello everyone, this is Michael Saltzman and I am the Director of Digital Product at Blue Sky Bio. In this tutorial video, I wanted to demonstrate the updated process flow to create a crown on a titanium abutment. The most significant upgrade and change that we made to the process flow is actually at the end of the process flow that you can now, in addition to exporting an STL file, you can generate a configuration file that can be sent to a milling machine to mill the created crown. This functionality is free in the Blue Sky Plan software, so you can design and you can export to a mill at no cost, and this functionality is going to stay free for quite a long time. Before we jump into the software and the process flow, I'd like to mention BioBigBox.com. BioBigBox was built by Blue Sky Bio. I was just speaking to a dentist who's familiar with Blue Sky Bio and Blue Sky Plan, and he mentioned that he's never heard of BioBigBox.com, and mentioned that other dentists may also not be familiar with it. So I'm not going to get into specifics right now, but check out the website, BioBigBox.com. It's a HIPAA-compliant file transfer, email, and backup system. Most of the functionality can be used at no cost. And if you do upgrade to a paid account, you get additional capabilities and features. You can mention that you heard me talk about it in this video and you are requesting a 50% discount on a premium account for three months time and we will send you a coupon code for that. So just go ahead and email us at plan at blueskybio.com and we can send you the coupon code for the 50% discount. But again, most of the features and functionality to be used at no cost. Let's take a look at the process flow in the software. I'm going to start by clicking crown and bridge, crown for titanium base as that is what we are dealing with. I'm going to use the buttons that I have on the top here to navigate to my desktop and then select the files for this case. I'm going to left click on the first one, hold down the shift key and then left click on the other files to multi-select them. Once I have them selected, I'll click OK. And the software automatically brings up the model alignment screen. I'm going to left click to select the model on which I'm going to be designing the crown. And then on the right side of the screen, select the jaw type and the type of model it is. Dentate. And on the bottom right, continue to alignment. Here I'm going to follow the image that appears on the top right of the screen, hold down my shift key and mark my first dot molar, mark my second dot as close to the middle as possible, and my third dot on the opposing side of the arch from the first dot. Once I have those points marked, the software automatically aligns the model to the grid. I could toggle the grid on and off swap the model orientation if need be, and then click continue. In this step, I'm able to fine tune the alignment or the placement of the model by using the widget or grabbing and dragging. I'm also able to toggle on all of my surfaces and then fine tune the placement with the widget or grabbing and dragging of all the models together. The grid and the widget can be toggled on and off. I'm going to click finish to complete the process of importing and aligning the models. The button in the top right, continue to scan by the alignment, will take us there. This message is telling us that before proceeding, we should make sure that the model is rotated and oriented so that we can see the scan body and specifically the flat part of the scan body. Now that that is done, I could click continue the scan body, click OK. And here I'm going to look in the library and select the relevant scan body. We also added in a new option here in case you scan the patient with an abutment protruding, you could click use abutment as scan body, select the relevant abutment from the list and use that as your scan body. At this point, I'm pressing OK. If I do need to rotate the models, I could use my left mouse button to click outside of the models and rotate and orient. If I click on the model, then it will try to align the scan body to the point that I clicked. At this point, I see the scan body and the flat section of it. I'm going to align my crosshairs to the middle of the flat part and left click once. The software is going to process and align the scan body. 
The software automatically brings up the Add Tooth screen. We have added several new libraries, so you could check those out. I'm going to select the relevant tooth, the general size, and here I have an option to select the relevant implant and abutment that I would like to align to the scan body. I'm going to use the default options, press OK, and then press OK again. And now we could see what happened here is the software aligned an abutment, an initial positioning for the tooth, and an implant all to the scan body. We have, a, we have our surfaces panel on the right hand side so we could hide any surfaces that are not relevant. We could also use our horizontal toolbar to toggle on and off the visibility of the scan body. And we could hide the model for a second and see how we now have an implant abutment and virtual tooth aligned to our case. Any model could be clicked on and the transparency slider could be used to make it transparent. At this point, if we want, we could go ahead and make some general improvements to the positioning and or the size of the crown. But during the process flow later, the software will take us through that. So there's no need to get hung up on it at this point. I'm going to proceed by clicking on continue to crown design. And just to deviate for a second, again, we have our surfaces panels so we could hide and see any model. You could also right click on a model to hide it completely or to make it transparent. And if you are somebody who would like to perfect the tooth design and positioning at this point prior to starting the process flow of creating the crown, you could switch over to the teeth edit panel, select the relevant model or click on it. And at this point, you could reposition or resize the virtual tooth. You could rotate it. And all of the editing tools have two sliders, one for the size and one for the strength. You could hold down the shift key and use your left mouse button to apply and smooth. Global geometry Transform allows you to grab any of these nodes to reshape. Add remove material. You could hold down the shift key to add material and your left mouse button, or you could use the control key and your left mouse button to remove material. Local geometry transform allows you to either protrude a particular part of the tooth or you can make the tool larger and then grab a whole section of the tooth and move it as one unit. The process of creating the crown is simple and straightforward. Select the relevant restoration type the relevant jaw type, and now we're going to select the correct model. The crown and the tie base are selected by default. If you are creating multiple crowns, then you could click to activate the relevant crown and abutment. Let's just confirm that that's correct. And you could select the opposing arch. The first step in the process is the undercuts. You can modify the undercuts by using the widget around the arrow or by properly orienting the model and then clicking set insertion direction from view. We have a slider if you would like to allow some undercuts. Now I'm going to click next. The second step is to mark the adjacent teeth holding down the shift key and dragging with my left mouse button. The next step, the software proposes the margin. I could clear the margin and redraw it by holding down the shift key and placing dots to position the margin. Or I could use the proposal the software gave. If I like to edit it, hold down the shift key and use your left mouse button just to grab and drag and to redraw 
and to modify the portion of the curve. Okay, then I'll go ahead and click on next. In this step, we could edit how the crown connects to the titanium base abutment. Just use your left mouse button to grab and drag any of the nodes to edit that uh, connection. We have the sliders here for the crown margin. We can see that as we change and move the slider, how that affects the margin of the, of the crown. Titanium base margin, that does something similar to how the crown will connect to the titanium base abutment and the crown cement spacer, which is the space between the titanium abutment and the crown for the adhesive. We have the option of creating a screw channel, which is toggled on and marked by default. And then I'm going to click next. In the final step, we are able to fine tune the crown. We can see that our contact has been highlighted in red to show us the contact. We could use the editing tools if we want to go ahead and edit the tooth and, and change that. You can also turn on the opposing arch. If you wanted to see how the tooth protrudes or contacts with the opposing arch, and you could actually use the editing tools from this view as well. So if there was a contact that you wanted to reduce, then you could just hold down the shift key, use your left mouse button, and go ahead and edit that. We also have the option of having the software automatically cut away the intersections on the occlusion or their proximal intersections. I'm going to turn those off and then continue to have my crown created. So before we go to export, let's just take a look. Let's go to teeth surfaces. We have two crowns listed here. The one with a D is the designed crown that we just made. The one without the D is just the original crown if we wanted to restart the process or make it again then we could use that original crown that's still there. And we could see here the crown that we created. You could click show implants to turn that off and see the interior of the crown. We also have different filters just to control the drop down. So if you have a long list of surfaces, multiple crowns, multiple models, you could use the filters to hide and show different surfaces quickly and conveniently. At this point, when we finished the design process, the export button appears automatically. And when we go ahead and click on it, we could see our surfaces available for export. So here we have our custom crown with the D, that's the designed one, and we have the option to export it to an STL file, which is checked in the export column, and we have the CAM column, which when checked will create the XML configuration file that can be sent to the milling machine to mill the crown. We have the export button that shows how many exports we have remaining. It's also important to note what we see here is cost is zero. So as I mentioned at the beginning, there is no cost to design and there's no cost to export to mill the crowns or to export them to an STL file. I'm going to make a new folder on my desktop. Click the OK button. And we can see that the software has exported the construction file for the milling machine as well as the STL file. So that's the process of designing the tooth and generating the XML configuration file. There are a lot of great videos created by Corey Glenn and many others. Corey has a video on crown down implant planning and how that could be done in Blue Sky Plan. Uh, so I recommend that you check out the education section of our website on Blue Sky Plan and different training tutorial videos. I'll put a link in the bottom to some videos I recommend. And again, don't forget biobigbox.com, HIPAA compliant file transfer, 
backup and email system. It's a freemium. Go ahead and set up an account. Most features could be used for free. And to upgrade to premium features and extra storage, send an email to plan at blueskybio.com. Tell them you watched this video and we'll send you a coupon code for a 50% discount on that upgrade.